Welcome back guys to the Spurgeon Piper. This is Wilson with you. And this week's video is another tobacco review and it is the Sun Bear release by Cornell and Dill for this year. And that is Sun Bear to Pillow. Uh, this is a ongoing release, small batch blend they've had. This is the fourth one I believe um, that they released um, annually. And uh, I went a little late to this year because I was on vacation last week. Um, it was released the week before. And so you've probably already seen some reviews on YouTube or read reviews on various sites. So I, I acknowledge that I'm a late to the party, but I'm gonna review it anyway, because I'm always excited to review this blend and similar blends like this. Um, so let me just remind you in case you didn't catch last video um, when I did a review, I will not be smoking the blend in the video any longer or for the foreseeable future and that is just for the sake of trying to have YouTube avoid um, somehow blocking my videos or, or flagging my videos making them where only those who are 18 years and older can watch them which requires that you actually uh, re, you know, verify that you're 18 years or older. They do various other things, and that is caused an issue on my channel. So, so far so good. It's you know, last video they have not flagged. Maybe that's helping. So, just so you know, I will not be smoking this blend in the video. If you're interested in how I smoke, there are other videos I have put out before that you can go watch, and that can be a help for you. So, uh, as usual, I'm gonna give you a background of the blend. Um, I'll give you a quick look at the blend, um, a little different than usual because I'm short on time. And then I will give you my notes on the blend, give you some comparisons. And uh, this is actually still available, believe it or not. And so you, if you're interested in this blend, it's not all sold out. There's a place that still has it, if not more places. So um, I'll try to share that with you. So let's get first a background of the blend coming from Cornell or Smoking Pipe. Uh, pipes.com's website they say that this blend Sunbear to pillow is a fine blend of the finest bright and red virginias balanced by 2019 bosma and 2018 izmir orientals Sunbear to pillow features subtle notes of raw ethically sourced to pillow honey from the ancient wetlands of northern florida produced from the nectar of the white ogachi to pillow tree during the short two-week bloom to pillow honey is among the rarest in the world in this blend, the honey's unique profile combines with a whisper of silver tequila and elderflower to complement the fruity and floral notes of specially selected tobaccos, resulting in a rich pipe blend with a wealth of character and a creamy round finish. Now, if we go to tobaccoreviews.com, which has been revamped, it's a little slower, I noticed, and they don't have the info up uh, description of the blend. But we do have the details. It is a Cornell and Dill blend, obviously, blended by Jeremy Reeves. Blend type is aromatic. Um, it is an Oriental Turkish Virginia uh, in content. Flavoring, alcohol, liquor, fruit, citrus, honey. Cut is flake, uh, packaging two ounce tin. Um, and of course it's US production uh, and it is it is available. Um, so I'll, I'll go ahead and share that with you. By and large, it is sold out. Um, not not uh, uncommon for their small batch blends, even though they produce quite a bit this time, uh, but they are sold out other than what I have found, and that is at Watch City Cigar, and you can get it for $13.25. I don't know how much they do have, but they do have it currently available for $13.25, so if you are interested in getting some of this blend, there's your chance, and I'm sure you can find it in some local tobacconists um, or brick and mortar stores. Um, usually they have stuff like this still on hand if they're not real popular, the, you know, the brick and mortar store is not real popular, uh, they'll have some on hand. So if you have something like that nearby, you may want to check. They may have it in stock. So with that said, I'm going to give you a look at the blend, but instead of giving you a different cut uh, or video, I'm just going to show you on camera right here and I think you're going to get the picture. So um, here is the blend. Um, I, I just want to point out this is not so much of a flake. It's a broken flake. Um, I have not found many full flakes in this, but you can see I'm already having some fall out, which is why I don't usually do this. But you can see the distinction of the types of uh, tobacco leaf in there. Uh, the darker Izmir Oriental leaf, uh, Bosma leaf, the brighter red, or excuse me, brighter Virginia. Uh, maybe you can catch some of the red in there as well. Uh, but it, it's a nice looking blend. Uh, I'll go ahead and share with you that it is quite moist. Um, if you're going to be picking some of this up or you're about to smoke this, 
uh, be prepared to, well, hey, there's a flake right there. Uh, be prepared to have to um, air it out some, um, dry it out. I, I'm usually very impatient on that. Um, I'm one of the worst and I will pack a pipe even if I know I should have aired out the blend. And I definitely battled this blend twice in a row trying to smoke it without airing it out, drying it out. So I actually left it open um, on my desk and I forgot about it and it was left open overnight. And it worked, it, it definitely didn't dry out too much. So do what you will, um, tr dry it out as you wish, but it does need to be dried out some. Uh, give you kind of a tin note to this. It has a m wonderful tin note. I mean, you can smell the, if you wanna say the flavoring, uh, you can smell the honey. It truly smells like honey. Um, you can smell uh, the, the grassier notes of the um, of the Virginia, but I mean, maybe some Oriental, but man, that honey, the, the tequila, the elderflower, that stuff comes out, especially the elderflower. So yeah, smells fantastic. Um, I, I'll go ahead and mention it is labeled an aromatic. I have been smoking it in non-aromatic pipes, uh, especially more of my Virginia oriented pipes. And is it going to ghost your pipe like your typical orient or typical aromatic? I don't know. I don't think so because it's honey, um, and it's more of just a, a a pure sweet topping or not. I shouldn't say topping, but a pure sweet flavoring. I, I I'm not so concerned about it. So do what you will on your pipes. I normally would avoid aromatics in my typical pipe, um, my non-aromatic pipes because of ghosting, but I have not found an issue so far in the pipes I have smoked this blend in. So um, I'll, I'll let you decide for yourself what is the best route to take on that. So let's get to notes. I do have some notes on this blend and uh, I, will, I will, as I mentioned earlier, it needs to be dried out and then crumbled up or crumbled up and then you dry it out. Um, it, it was a bit of a battle, more than usual, I, I find. I don't usually have so many, so many issues with smoking pipes or smoking flake blends, but this one I had a bit, and I had to dry it out, and that, that was fine. It, it did the job, so you do need to dry it out. Um, I do crumble it up and, and pack my pipe in that regard. Uh, what do I notice first about this blend? Well, first the Orientals. Um, I wanna go ahead and give you the comparison of last year's because I've only smoked last year's Sun Bear. Um, I, I didn't smoke the other two, the Black Locust, and I forgot what the first one was. I have not smoked those. So my comparison only is to last year's Mountain Flower, which I was a fan of, some weren't. Um, so comparison of that, um, I find this one more Oriental forward. Uh, they usually play condiment rows. When we think of Orientals, they're more kind of condiment, um, I, I would say, but they are front and center in this blend. Earthy, woody, spicy, floral. I mean, they are on main display. Um, uh, then the Bright Leaf, Virginia Leaves, they offer some citrus notes, while the 2019 Reds, they kind of bring some fruity notes that Red Virginias are known for, uh, with a bit of spice. And, and as you smoke more, and so newer, Beginner smokers, you may not notice this. You, you surely don't notice this, but um, as you smoke more, you may be able to tell that a spice is coming more from Red Virginia's than maybe say Oriental or from a Perique or from um, uh, dark, fire, dark Fired Kentucky, what have you. But uh, there, there is like this earthy spiciness coming from the Red Virginia's. It's, it's not as bold as the Oriental's, but it's there. And I do enjoy that. Um, then you pick up the Tupelo Honey, which is unique from last year's Sun Bear. So Sun Bear last year, of course, had honey as well. I think it was from North Carolina, South Carolina, but uh, you could definitely tell this is a different type of honey. I I don't think of that of many other blends. I Bijou has honey in it. That's another Cornell Dill blend. I'll mention that later on. Um, but I was just surprised how this honey is unique. It stands out. It is a sweet cream and it has this creamy, character that we don't think of when we think of honey, but it is a sweet cream and, and it's fantastic. I really enjoy that about this blend. Um, the elderflower, the tequila, they give me a flashback to last year. So those are, th th that's one aspect that really draws in in comparison with last year's. Um, I, I love that about last year's Sun Bear. Um, I enjoy it uh, just as much as I do here. The, it's floral, it's sweet. Uh, like a sweet berry and herbal. So 
Uh, this is an excellent summertime blend. Let me add that. Last year's I said that too. I, I still have Sun Bear from last year that I'll pull out just for the summer, spring, summer blends or uh, for the spring, summertime. This is right in line with this. Um, I do find this one a bit more woody, uh, earthy, spicy. Again, the Orientals are more in display on this year's and uh, it kind of reminds me of fall. Even the, let me put the top on. Even, even the image of this blend reminds me more fall, right? You have that, the, the fall uh, coloring going on here. Um, I mean, it's still summer blend, I guess, but I, I do have thoughts of fall and uh, autumn with this blend and maybe because of the woodiness, the earthiness, uh, herbalness, but great, great blend nonetheless for this time of year. So going back to comparing to last year's, uh, the one review I did watch so far, and that was from JC Pipe and Knives channel, and you can find him out. He has some, he puts out some good content, but he did a review of this channel, or excuse me, of this blend, and while I was on vacation, I went ahead and watched it. Uh, he made a great comment in comparison to last year's, and I'm just gonna go ahead and give that to you, the comment he made. Uh, he said this year's was, uh, Last year's was great, but this one has more depth than last year's. So he says something like that. That's not verbatim. Uh, but I agree with that. I, I, again, I'm a fan of last year's. I, if you remember, there was a bit of, it was kind of controversial in the, in the way that some loved it, like me, and some hated it. And, and there are folks who hated it that I really follow on reviews, and I usually am in line with them on reviews. But uh, we weren't in line here. And I don't know how they feel about this blend, but I will say this blend is more in depth than last year's. Um, there is more going on with it. And I, I'd be happy to smoke both. But if I had to choose between last year's Mountain Flower and this one, I'm, I'm definitely choosing this one uh, for that sake. But I would be happy with both. Uh, both are great summertime blends. Uh, what is the comparison? Uh, the only one I could think of uh, is Bijou by Cornell and Dill as well, which is uh, a Virginia Oriental blend and it has honey. Uh, it's been a while, year and a half, two years since I smoked Bijou. I still have quite a bit in my cellar, but what I recall, I, I just wasn't a fan of that. I don't, I'm not sure why. I think I wanted more sweetness out of that blend, uh, but there you have it. That's the only comparison I could think of off the top of my head. Maybe you have some you wouldn't want to give below in the comments, uh, but these are unique blends. These are one of the most unique blends that Cornell and Dill makes because of the uh, addition of unique honey, I, I would say. So Virginia is not unique. Their, uh, their Bosma, Izmir, Orientals, you can find others with that, you know, in their blends, but uh, how they blend it, how Jeremy Reeves blend it, how, uh, how they add the honey, uh, it is unique and I have not been able to find comparisons. So you can probably tell I'm a fan of this already and if I have to give it a score, it's gonna be somewhere around a 8.5 to 9 the the little bit of a knock is kind of a uh, it's selfish knock and that is um, I, I seem to just battle um, I, I battle a bit more than usual with getting it uh, lit and keeping it lit um, and though again drying helps that is just that was different from last year's I didn't struggle so much on last year's so uh, there you have it if you have tried it please give your thoughts below um, I would love to know I'm be I'm really interested to in know what some others that I follow like beans 316 um, what they think of it I don't know if he's produced put out a video review on this blend or not maybe he didn't even pick it up because he didn't like last year's but uh, I'll be curious to know what others think about this blend guys that's all I have um, I hope you're well I hope you have you're having a blessed week and until then we'll talk to you soon